In this video, I'll show you how to minimize the position error in a servo mechanism two different ways. First, using tuningless response level with 100% feed forward, and then using standard auto tuning also with 100% feed forward. Hi, I'm Matt Pelletier. This ball screw moves a small load connected to a rod and a mounting plate. The Sigma 7 motor drives this ball screw through a bellows coupling. I'm connected to the Sigma 7 amplifier with Sigma Win Plus, and I'm commanding this move through program jog, although the controller could also be used to send the command. Some applications require the mechanism to follow a very specific motion profile. This means it's important for the position error to be low, at least during the most critical part of the move. Consider that this ball screw mechanism will be used to drive a cutting process while following the feedback position of a conveyor. I have program jog configured to approximate this move. The position error should be near zero when the cut takes place during this constant speed part of the move. But you see that at default, the trace shows over 20 million pulses of error which for this actuator is nearly 25 millimeters of error at the load. That's definitely too much error. For applications like this, you must determine at some point how much position error measured at the encoder will result in acceptable performance of the machine. So in this case, I'm going to use five thousandths of a millimeter, which is somewhat beyond the typical mechanical repeatability of a ball screw that value converts to 4,194 encoder pulses, which I've set to the positioning completed width. And what that will do will make the coin, position coincidence signal, uh, go low whenever the position error falls below that level. The quick and easy way to lower the position error is to just keep on using the adaptive tuningless mode, which is on by default but maximize PN109 feed forward to 100%. I'll write that. And then raise the tuningless response level setting as high as possible without producing any noise. So you want to do this with the motor running and just gradually increase. And if there's no noise, then you can leave it at the maximum like this. The trace of this move shows the position error has been reduced quite dramatically. If you scale it, however, we'll see how much error it actually is. And with the cursors and the coin signal here as a reference, you can see that maybe 65 milliseconds after the top speed is reached, the error is lower than that specified level. A little closer look here at the error shows that it's usually just hovering right here around zero and not near that 4,000 encoder counts. If this is acceptable for the application, then tuning is complete. But if it's not quite good enough, then the next strategy is to run auto-tuning using mode one without model following control. That's here under tuning. And then after that, increase the feed forward back to 100% just like I did before. We'll execute and accept these warnings. The first requirement is to turn off tuning less, so okay to change. I'll cycle power like it says here. Now I can go back into tuning to execute. But before you do auto tuning, you should find the inertia if you don't know it, so I will go through that. It's grayed out, so that means I need to close all the other windows that are conflicting with this. Now I can execute. And you see in the confirm button that this will do both a forward and reverse move. So I better cancel this and jog the motor back to the middle of the actuator here. I'll jog forward to about the middle. Now servo off and let's go back in here to execute the inertia ratio. If this speed is acceptable, we'll just leave it at default and go to the next step. Start and next, and servo on. We'll do a forward move and a reverse. It's 
iterating to find the moment of inertia ratio here. And it looks like it's settled on 342%. All right, I'll turn off the servo and continue here to write the result into the parameter and finish this step. Software reset is prompted here. We'll do that. Now, a couple checks before you run auto tuning, especially if it's going to be without model following control. It's first go back to the parameters and be sure that you set PN109 back to the default of zero. Write that in here. It's also recommended to uh, set the mode switch torque level up to max beyond the capacity of the motor. And in fact, there are a number of preliminary checks for auto tuning listed in the manual. Now we're ready for auto tuning with position reference input from program jog. So I better jog that motor back to the starting position here in jog operation in reverse. Okay, let's close this and now auto tuning. Mode selection two mentions model following control. Mode selection three also uses model following control even though it's not mentioned here, but mode one does not. Remember that model following control will result in very high position error during the move, as this optimizes the prediction of the end of the move and lower settling time. But when tuning for low position error, it's important to choose mode selection one, standard, which will not turn on model following control. This is a ball screw mechanism, so we'll leave that one alone. And generally, it is recommended to check the box and tune from default settings. Next, and yes to confirm. Confirm the inertia ratio. And now it's ready to start tuning to that move, which I will initiate from program jog. And start tuning. It measures oscillation, searches for the best gains. Applies a notch filter. And tuning is completed. So finish and finish. And I'll go back into the parameters to set PN109 back to 100%. Right to servo. And now in the trace, we'll see how this looks with the move one more time. And this looks even better than before. You see the coin signal is low, below five thousandths of a millimeter for the great majority of that constant speed portion of the move. This servo mechanism is tuned pretty well, I'd say, for low position error. Finally, a parameter compared to default. This shows the gains of the position loop, the speed loop, the torque loop, filter time constant, and the notch filters, as well as other parameters that have been used to tune this system. Thank you for watching this video. Please note that the product manual contains a detailed section on tuning. Additionally, Yaskawa offers free, hands-on, self-guided video training covering the basics of Sigma Win Plus and servo tuning. That's all at www.yaskawa.com slash self-guided. We also offer a live tuning lab where you can come in and tune a mechanism like this for yourself with the guidance of the instructor. For more information, please go to yaskawa.com.